What do witches do? They are malefic, negative and destructive. Their knowledge of the art of the occult gives them tremendous powers. They can change the course of events and people's lives, but only to do harm. The fear, the terror, the depths of madness, the allure of darkness. What drives us to seek all of this? What leads us to crave this, even if only in fiction? After thousands of years spent looking above, dreaming of reaching the stars, narrating tales of great heroes and valiant knights to whom the heaven's doors opened wide, at last men found themselves looking around, pointing their gaze to what had remained uncharted until that moment. The abyss, the darkness, the unknown. Filmmakers haven't been different, and cinema has been used since its dawn as a means for showing the horror, both the one of supernatural origin and the one rooted in the human mind. Furthermore, it allowed to give an increasingly intense experience to the audience through both the visual and auditory contribution. In the latest century, many have tried to investigate every aspect of the Uncharted, realizing unforgettable masterpieces. However, the strength of a story especially resides in its narrator, and Dario Argento is undoubtedly one of the greatest masters of horror worldwide. His entrance in the world of cinema is precisely due to his desire to tell a story and to do it in his own way. Italy was experiencing difficult years, full of suspicion, mistrust and fear, years marked by political terrorism, when the audience's attention was drawn by the giallo genre, which was launched by renowned directors such as Mario Bava and Lucio Fulci. In this cultural context, Argento debats as a director and a producer, starting a 50 years long career spent narrating about evil in all its appearances. In Argento's works, the assassin is a dark and mysterious character. Differently from traditional detective stories, we spectators watch him hit, we see his killing spree in action, an unprecedented violence, brutal and explicit, that leaves nothing to imagination. We know nothing about him. He is just a black shape, following the model defined by Mario Bava in his 1964 movie Blood and Black Lace, a masterpiece of giallo which defined most of the stereotypes that would have been a distinctive trait of this genre in the following years. The murderer is displayed as a black-clothed figure, and we observe his deeds from his point of view, thanks to subjective shootings and gloved and framings, ideas that will later be used by other directors, such as Quentin Tarantino. However, who are these assassins? They are common people, members of the Italian upper and middle classes in the early 70s, and their stories take place in refined apartments and in aristocratic palaces, where being respected and accepted by society means everything. They don't act based on cold and evaluated planning. They seem apparently normal and decent, but they must carefully hide their traumas, madness and distress from the people around them, because otherwise they will be irreparably marginalized from the world they live in. This threat is constantly recalled by the presence of the color red. A bright, violent and aggressive red. A warning and danger signal. A reference to Eros and Thanatos. Love and death. This color is found in many places, from the curtains of a theater to the blood-covered knives, and warns us to never 
let our guard down. However, the assassins don't kill for pleasure or fun. They kill because of fear. The fear of their world falling apart. The fear that their shady past might come to light. That the apparently respectable society where they live might exclude them. They are sick people living in the shadows, wishing to remain in the darkness, smashing with savage brutality any attempt to disclose their true appearance. As a completely rotten core in an apparently perfect apple, that corrupts with its wickedness anything it touches. You have killed, and you will kill again. Differently, in the trilogy of the Three Mothers, Argento abandons the realistic context, typical of the works he had realized until that moment, to dedicate himself to the unreal. Thus, the structure of his films changes too, becoming more and more dreamlike and illogical. His works turn into dark fables, characterized by marvelous and innovative color and light effects. Everything becomes increasingly surreal, getting to resemble the extreme and dreamlike or nightmarish aesthetics of the German Expressionism. The violence reaches pinnacles of exacerbation never shown by the Roman director before, and the motives of the killers change too. The witches represent evil in its purest and cruelest form. They are not ruthless creatures because of mental illnesses, nor they are driven by a vengeful or self-preservative spirit. Instead, their only goal is to accomplish evil deeds in order to obtain personal advantages, achievable exclusively through other people's suffering. Thus, everything becomes a deadly dance macabre, where their narrative logic and coherence give way to horror and slaughter, making these films emotional experiences that overwhelm the narration, praises to the cruelty of evil as an end in itself, and nightmares from which is impossible to escape until their devastating and awful ending. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment below. If you want to stay up to date on the releases of our next videos, please subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. We hope to see you soon in our next video. Ciao a tutti!